Did you think we were going to talk about that kind of bow technique today? No, 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 no. We're going to talk about something much more important. I'm Tobias Murphy, and this is Murphy Music Academy. <laughs> And of course, if you are looking to improve your bow technique in either violin, viola, or even cello, then shoot an email to admin at murphymusicacademy.org, where we'll be very happy to set you up with one of our highly qualified private teachers for your free trial lesson. Now on to the actual content of the video. When most students are thinking about bow technique, assuming that they're thinking about it at all, they're usually doing it in the context of, you know, flashy pyrotechniques or fast playing. And of course, that type of thinking really just reveals the typical student's immaturity. Flashiness is not true bow control, and learning a few surface level tricks here and there does not translate into having a great bow arm in the long term. So today I want to talk about what you should be focusing on while working on developing your bow arm that will allow you to have true bow control. So what exactly is good bow control, especially since I've just excluded flashy technique from the definition? For my purposes today, I think the best way to define a good quality bow arm is one that allows the player to transfer a beautiful sound from beginning to end of each note and from note to note in a manner that is smooth and, most importantly, efficient, which means basically if the average person starts thinking about your bow arm while you're playing, it probably needs some work. So here's what this would look like in the simplest terms. I start playing a note, any note will do, and the moment my bow touches the string, the string starts to vibrate, okay? It is nothing but pure vibration, no extra noises, and I'm able to keep that vibration all the way to the end of that note, whether that's in the middle of the bow, or at the tip of the bow, or at the frog of the bow, it doesn't matter. I'm keeping the vibration going all the way through for as long as that note lasts. And then when I go to the next note, I make sure that vibration is essentially transferred into the next note, so there's no stopping of the vibration, at least not perceptibly. And once again, there's a pure vibration, nothing getting in the way of that sound. And like many of the things I talk about in this channel, you might think, wow, that sounds like really simple and rudimentary, but I know that a lot of you probably have a lot of extra sound happening within your bow strokes and definitely in between your bow strokes. Does your tone perhaps not always sound as resonant in the middle of the bow? Perhaps there's some skittering or whispering. Perhaps you're one of those people that accents every single down bow. Maybe you do annoying and unnecessary swells at the beginnings of all your notes. Now, these are just a few examples of typical problems students have with their bow technique. There are many more, and each one of them is a sign of bad bow control. Thankfully, there's actually a pretty easy way to fix this and get yourself on the road of having top quality bow technique. First thing is, if you haven't already, make sure you go watch my videos on open strings and the bow hold. You kind of want to have those things in place before you start embarking on what we're going to talk about next. Now, of course, if you already have a great bow hold and are able to easily draw at least an open string with straight bow from frog to tip, then we can start moving on to the next step. To start with, I want to use a little bit of visualization that is going to help you understand how the bow is supposed to approach the strings for the most beautiful, simple, and sonorous sound. So to start with, I'm going to take my fist like this, all closed, and this is going to represent the dormant string. Okay, this is the string sitting on the bridge, nothing's happening to it, just sitting there. My goal when I touch the bow to the string is for the dormant string to open up in what my mind is a perfect circle around the center of where the string was dormant. Now I know that vibration doesn't actually work this way, but stick with me on this one. So when I touch the bow to the string, the only goal is to get the string to go from this to this, as much of a perfect circle as I can make. 
okay? Sometimes I feel like there's tone where there's kind of a dent in the circle. You kind of hear that sort of sound that happens in the middle of the bow or sometimes at the beginning of the bow. Sometimes I hear a kind of spike in the circle. You kind of get that kind of sound at the beginning of the bow. Sometimes you get a little bit of fuzzy sound around the edge of the circle. Anything that isn't this pure, perfect circle around the center of the tone or the center of the string is not what we want, okay? And somehow I found that thinking of tone in this way has really helped my students develop much smoother and better bow technique, okay? Because it simplifies your goals, right? So my only goal is once I touch the bow to the string is I'm just going to open up that circle and I'm going to keep it open the whole time, right? And I don't have to actually work that hard to keep it open. I almost have to work hard to just not do extra stuff, right? So long as the string is doing pure resonance, then I'm good, right? I don't have to try to force anything out of the string. I just have to keep it ringing. And then when I change the bow, the goal is, is to start that process immediately as soon as I do the bow change. So as far as the audience is concerned, that circle never closed. So here again. Just nothing but pure tone. Once again, I know this seems very simple, but truly making the most simple aspects or seemingly simple aspects of violin technique hyper-efficient is the true sign of technical maturity in a violinist. Mastering this aspect of legato bow technique is going to have ramifications to everything you do when you're playing if you truly learn how to do it properly. But really, the best thing you can do with this information I've given you is just try to apply this everywhere. Make this the primary way you approach your tone for everything. If you're playing the Tchaikovsky Concerto, then add this to the beginning. Okay, my whole point is to keep that vibration open. If it's forte, I might want to make that circle a little bigger. If it's pianissimo, then maybe I want to make the circle a little smaller. But my approach to the tone is going to be the same. If I'm playing something much simpler, I don't know, maybe I'm playing, you know, the Vivaldi A minor concerto in book four. Each one of these strokes, I'm just trying to keep that string circle open. Even if I put a space between each note, so there's a little bit of breathing room because it's not completely legato, my still, still my goal is just to keep the circle pure and open for each one of these strokes. Whether the note's fast or slow, whether the note's long or short, my whole point is just to continually and purely open the circle of vibration around the note. Anyway, this is an idea I've been using in my teaching to very great effect to improve my students' tone and their bow arms, and I wanted to share it with all of you because I know that you are also looking to improve your bow arm and your tone because you know as well as I do, there is no pleasure in mediocrity. I've been Tobias Murphy for Murphy Music Academy. Happy practicing, and I'll see you next time.